which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll start with the consent items. We have the approval of the minutes from July 17th, the regular board meeting, as well as the study session, July 24th, regular meeting, August 10th, regular session, and the August 10th study session. Um, did anyone find any corrections or points of note that they needed to make out of any of those? Does anyone object to approving these all together? And the public have any comments about any of those? Okay. No? I'll take a motion. So moved. I'll second. Move by Kyle. Second by Stephen. All in favor, raise your right hand. Minutes approved. Four zero. Okay, we'll move to the financial report. Todd, did you want to go run through these? Sure. I'm just <laughs> in the uh, education fund at the end of July or for July we had receipts of one million twenty six thousand five hundred and ninety six dollars and twenty two cents and expenses of one million thirty four dollars four hundred twenty two dollars and nine cents our cash balance at the end of July is nine hundred thirty one thousand eight hundred fifty one dollars and forty nine cents Uh, debt service in July, we had um, revenue of $7,048.72. There were no expenditures. The ending balance at the end of July is $1,167,997.57. And in the operations fund, we had receipts of $82,377.11. Expenses of $250,512.36. Our cash balance at the end of July in the operations fund is one million eleven thousand two hundred sixty-seven dollars and thirty-five cents. Any questions? Any questions from the audience? Right. We had. If it's okay with you guys, I'll just roll through the claims and we'll approve all three. Thank you. Uh, we had approval of claims for one million eight hundred ninety-nine dollars, one million eight hundred ninety-nine thousand one hundred sixty-three dollars and thirty-one cents. Were there any questions or concerns on the claims? Okay. And then we have approval of payroll for July twenty-eighth and August eleventh, totaling seven hundred fifty-seven thousand ninety dollars and thirty-four cents. Are there any questions or concerns about the payroll? No. Okay. Any thoughts from the public about either of those claims or payroll? If not, we'll take a motion. So moved. Moved by Stephen. Second. Second by Ethan. All in favor? Raise your right hand. Okay. <laughs> motion approved. <laughs> Five zero. Hi, Mark. Good evening. Okay, we will move on to the second reading of the policies. And I'll just scroll through the list, and then if there's any questions or comments at the end, we can go that way. So we have bylaws, bylaws 0141, 0142.1, 0142.2, 0142.3, 0142.3, 0144.1, and then we have policies 1213.01, 1425, 1615, 2410, 
7510, 7540.02, 8310, and 8451. Any thoughts, questions, or comments on those? Yes, ma'am. What does that tell us? I mean, where can I go to find out what these are? On the website. They're and on. so it, it, I went on the website today and I looked on the agenda and I looked at their policies and things. So if I go back and I look at all of these, they're going to describe what all of these are so that I'll know if we want them for our school system. Is that the idea of that? Hmm. They're listed in there as far as some are, the majority of these are um, changing, what was it, changing the word? You know, it was changing like, like must to shall, must to shall, and yeah. or like an icy code changes, and so the number changes. And um, matter of fact, all of these were in the packet from Neola, telling us this change, this needs to be updated, the law changed, we need to update this. Um, I don't think there's a single one of these that we brought to the table ourselves and said we need to change this policy for the school district. No, you know. Well, I sort of figured that, but uh, okay. In reference to finding them, if you get to the board docs page and you see that policies tab in the top right, when you click there, the numbers that are associated with the policy oh, on the when that policy's top right, yeah. the tab up there uh -huh. next to agenda and meetings. If right. you that, click, yeah. yeah, if you click on that, all these numbers that are associated with the attachments show where they are in the policies page. So you can kind of navigate there. So all the bylaws start with zero because they're from the bylaws section, which says zero, zero, zero. Will this particular page be there so I can check the ones that you're discussing tonight? Yes. The policies page? Yeah, it's, that's publicly accessible, yeah. And that's what the attachments are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Click on the attachment. It actually gives you the verbiage. And then it'll, I think it actually gives you the trail of different policies. Well, I'm every single policy, but I'd like to know what you're talking about. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Any other questions, thoughts? Okay. I'll take a motion to approve the second reading of the list of policies. Uh, so moved. Moved by Ethan. <coughs> Anyone? Awesome. Kyle? Thank you. <laughs> All in favor, raise your right hand. Uh, Thank you, Mark. Motion approved, 5-0. Okay, presentation and board consent to advertise the 2024 budget. All right, Todd, I can bring up. Go ahead. So I prepared the uh, PowerPoint, um, the binder that, it, that the board has, has the uh, breakdown by line item, the insurance, the salary, the supplies, all that. So I, I didn't go through that before we ended. Obviously it's, it's something that someone's interested in and we can make that happen. But um, this has been in the, the uh, PowerPoint since 2019. Just to remind those that are familiar with the old fund system that how, how our, our funds are set up now. We used to get five funds and um, the legislature decided to, instead of having them broken down in those particular ways using a general fund uh, concept and the, the other specific funds to break it down more into a, uh, something that's more appropriate. Uh, so the education costs are specifically in the education fund, the operations costs are in the operations fund, that service didn't change. This one date, so the, the budget calendar, um, assuming permission from tonight, um, then I, I will have the uh, information posted to Gateway by Friday or before. Um, that will allow us to have a public hearing on the budget on the 18th and assuming no changes or issues, the board can adopt that on the 23rd of uh, 
October. The DLGF has a deadline of November 1st, and they are very strict about that, other than if it is on a weekend day. We don't have that. If I wouldn't have that anyway, they would make us adopt our previous year's budget problem. <coughs> so that's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm just trying to play the crap or understand. Um, this gives a background of uh, some of the fund balances at the end of the previous year. This will be the last year we'll see the transportation and bus replacement fund, but um, a little landscape of how we've done in time. Right, uh, this page shows a little bit of our history, recent history with uh, assessed valuation. We had quite the increase in 2023. Uh, and the, the levies show that. Um, so hopefully I think that their the growth quotient was around 5%, 4% for money, something like that this year. So um, we'll see how that affects things. Um, we'll get into the funds, rainy day fund. Not predicting anything at the moment. Uh, rainy day. Um, hopefully, we can leave that. Add to that at some point in time. Maybe we'll see how this next year goes. There's some encouraging things going on in the district. So, um, education's next. Um, the legislature. Um, we're in the beginning. The first year of the two-year budget. Uh, they front loaded the increase, so I think that's going to um, affect us in a positive way. Uh, the basic grant, we've also got some interest right now in our TCU account. I think we're about 4.5% each month. We want the variable rate, that's been a, a good choice for us. So, uh, those are some of the factors that have increased our revenues in those, those the, the top two um, items. But I think it's important to point out, as Todd just alluded to, they front loaded the basic grant. So we're going to see a larger increase this year, and then next year those numbers are going to, to drop. So we need to make sure as we're planning uh, and going through negotiations, we have a two year plan looking at those numbers. To, just to give an idea, I think the first year percent was like 5%, the next year around 5 the next year's around 1 <laughs> So I don't know what we're going to do, but. <laughs> um, so, expenditures on the next page. Um, basically, when I do when I do these numbers, I can start revenue and then work backwards <coughs> into the expenses. So, um, most of our expenses in the top line that's our elementary, middle school, high school um, supply line or uh, education line. Uh, so, a lot of most. Of a lot of our cafe expenses come out of that basically. So, um, tra the transfers at the bottom of the page, um, I put in that's about approximately 15% of the basic grant out of the revenues, but we've never transferred that much. I just put that in there to be safe. They're asking that we can reduce that as the year goes on or at the end of the year if we if need be. So, um, deal just allows us to do that with the additional appropriation process. So. Debt service, um, just trying to, you know, like I said, this is an estimate of what I have at the moment. So that number, um, our tax levies, that, that, that number's up. Um, but we also, the next page, right now we have a little bit over. However, there's a 23 bond. I'm not sure we're big, big, we have got that far big to tell us how that's going to view, you know, fit in the budget. So, and that'll obviously impact what the deal Jeff gives us or we get from our, our levy. But we bet we the debt service fund stayed relatively consistent in my five years here. So uh, next the operations fund. Um, shows the transfer from the fund, which obviously if we don't transfer that all is going to affect our, our expenditures, but um, I also built that into the budget so couple of different areas. Um, revenues are, are projected to be up there as well. Um, miscellaneous revenues up a little bit where we started the daycare, so that adds into that, that, that revenue as well. So, 
probably the only thing that really is sticks out this year from last year is as SR3 winds down, we're getting back to the technology, a lot of the technology things coming back, the software coming back into the budget, the operations fund, and that you'll see that in the 2500 line or the second one down. I'm still, um, I had to beat that up to make sure we cover a lot of software that we, that we have that we had to pay for. So. That's basically it. Oh, the bus, sorry, I missed the bus plan. Buses, that I think you mentioned, that couple of the buses have really increased in price. And, uh, first year I was here, I think we spent, of course, we already have. The one thing we've changed since then is LED lights and uh, the stop arm cameras. But the first year I was here, we paid $106,000 for bus, and now we're up to 155000 bus. So that's a, that's a big increase. Hopefully that stabilizes, but those factors are a lot of our control, so. Todd, where is it built in for like, um, to offset the book rental, like the software, you know, the book, the fees that we already have on those contracts? I know some of it's software, so I'm assuming that's in the software so, technology line. Yeah, yeah, the back on the education, or, I'm sorry, the operations fund in that 2500 that would be where that, uh, where that, that used to be that from. Um, obviously, it doesn't show that because it shows the whole grouping, which has, you know, all the technologies, you know, payroll and everything on the technology. But I think I, I think for software I added, I didn't, I didn't did, uh, budget anything last year because I think we had extra money this year for, or excuse me, for 23. For 24, I put 250 or 300,000 in software. So even like the hard bound books are in that line item? No, that would just be anything soft, just software. Canvas, um, Harmony Renewal. Right, okay. Anything, I mean, there's, <laughs> I can go on and on if I ask Scott <laughs> until he's read them off, but yeah. <laughs> no, I get it. So Casey, part of your question, I think, and Todd, you may need to walk them through, is out of education fund, and we know that in November-ish, we should be getting a reimbursement for per student, it goes along with our ADM, and then they will give us a one-time payment at that point in time to help offset, and we'll know a little bit better how far we off are. Of course, I've numbers. seen confusing guidance because it has been mentioned it will be in the education fund. It's also right. been mentioned that we'll still have the textbook rental fund. I'm not sure exactly which way they're going. I hope they keep it separate. It makes it easier to track um, and, and uh, be prudent with the funds that way. Sometimes they throw stuff all in one fund and it's harder to track, it's harder to keep that money for you. So aren't they supposed to do that for two years? So we're gonna track it, they've asked mm -hmm. us to track it for two years and then they will reevaluate during their next budget cycle how close they are to um, offsetting that cost for school districts. I got it. Thank you. Any questions? Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. So, do you just want a motion on? So, I believe what Todd is asking for is board approval to advertise the 2024 budget. So, does everybody understand kind of what that been? New members, like, do you guys understand kind of what that the flow is? Okay. Any questions or thoughts? So we would encourage you to go through those books, and if you have questions at the next study session and at the next board meeting, mm -hmm. um, we'll try to walk you through any more questions or concerns that you may have, or if you want more detail in certain areas, we'll be glad to walk you through that. And I was also working on it meeting with the field chair for the first to go through the table budget workshop meeting. So any questions or I you want to talk about feel free to any comments or thoughts, questions from the general public? Okay. Right. I'll take a motion. So moved. Moved by Steven. Second. Second. Hey, Ethan. All in favor, raise your right hand. Abstain. 
four zero. Motion approved. Uh, next on the list is the approval of the dot com SLP contract for twenty three and twenty four. Jen here? She is not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same thing. So we are um, we posted for another speech and language pathologist. We were not able to secure any applicants. I know that Jen did reach out to one person individually. Um, we're in conversation hoping that maybe next year we can land that person. Until then, based on our caseload, we do need to pick up an SLP for this um, year. We did do due diligence and track three companies um, to engage them. Dot com have the best um, monetary value, but as a uh, service to students as well. So we have shifted the caseload and what that looks like to make sure that those who need the most time and attention in their um, speech and language uh, IEPs are making sure that we get those uh, with person-to-person uh, -person contact, those with minor SLP uh, needs we are using this SLP contract for those students. And that annual contract cost was the 92,426, correct? Correct. Okay. So sure. Not to exceed that. Not to exceed that, okay. Any questions? Okay. Any questions from the public? Jana, did you say, or Kathy? That is not to ex not to exceed a specific amount. Correct. And that is the ninety two ninety two thousand four hundred twenty six. Okay. Do you foresee it being that much? We we never know how many more students may enroll with that right. need, but that I we don't anticipate that okay. or not at this time. Any other questions? I'll take a motion to approve the <coughs> Oops, wrong attachment. The claims. <laughs> to um, approve the dot com SLP contract for 2023-24. I'll move to approve. Okay. Steven? I'll second that. Second by Ethan. All in favor? Aye. Motion approved. Five zero. Okay, next we have the approval of the TAG grant policy. So the TAG policy is the teacher appreciation grant and each year we need to bring that to the board for approval. I did reach out to Hope and we both agreed that uh, keeping that status quo seems to be the best for everybody, which means that they, teachers would need to meet the um, Indiana code, the policy that the state outlines. Um, there has to be a 25% differential between highly effective and effective teachers. If they have retired or moved to a different district, they're no longer eligible for the grant monies. Um, they have to be uh, here in the district. Um, trying to think. The, the other important part of this with the approval of the tag policy is the money, when it comes in, we get notice that the money has been uh, sent to the school. I believe it's a 14 day turnaround time that we have to have it back to the employees or back to those who qualify for the teacher's uh, appreciation grant. So sometimes there is a board meeting in between there, sometimes there's not, but by the approval of this policy, we would be following um, what the state outlines and releasing those funds within that time frame. They typically come right around uh, Thanksgiving time Last year they were a little bit late and uh, that had all of us a little nervous and, but typically it's right around the end of November when they release those to us. Okay. Any questions, thoughts, concerns? Sorry. Yeah. Is that just like bonuses for the teachers that do well or are they using it in their classrooms? I'm confused. It's it a grant it would from be, the state. Yeah. It's a grant from the state for a teacher that improves, not improves, on their evaluation they have to be highly effective or effective. There has to be a 25% differential in the amount that is given to each teacher, but it is monies that the teachers receive. For their personal use. Mm -hmm. Correct. Because they've done an excellent job. Correct. Correct. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. 
Any other thoughts? Okay, if not, I'll take a motion to approve the tag grant policy. So moved. Okay. Easy. <coughs> Second by Mark. All in favor, right hand. Aye. Motion approved, five zero. Okay, next we have the, to approve the old football score no, scoreboard as surplus to be auctioned off. So our new board is up and we did offer the old scoreboard um, to the junior football league, the white football youth, mm -hmm. thank you, youth football. Um, they didn't see a need or a use for it. So at that point in time, um, the recommendation is to auction this off. I think there's been some interest Some people have reached out and asked us about that, so. Are you gonna do this on the online? Yes, like would, we would work with Scott to do that. Cool. Scott's got the magic touch. <laughs> <laughs> it's proven to be effective for us. So they actually usually go well. Right? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. They do. Larger exposure. Yeah. Any thoughts, questions, or concerns about that? Any thoughts from the public? If not, I'll take a motion. So moved. Motion by Stephen. Second. Second. Hi, Kyle. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. And Mark. Motion approves, 5 0. Next is the approval of the Riddle Parent Teacher Conference on Wednesday, October 18th from 3.30 to 6.30. Mr. Bernacki, would you like to speak to that just briefly, please? Yes, that's um, after fall break. We wanted to have our parent teacher conferences uh, consecutively, so we're actually going Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, so that's the, the reason for the, the Wednesday there. We didn't want to use a Monday, and we didn't want to use a Friday, so. <clears throat> But we wanted them back to back, so that's kind of what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Saturday, Saturday days of the week. Yep. Saturday and Sunday weren't a con consideration. I didn't dare <laughs> drop those. <laughs> 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 Any thoughts? Yes. Yeah. Questions? Concerns? From the public? No. Yeah, I'll take a motion. So move. Oh. Motion by Mark, second by Ethan. There we go. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. Motion approved, 5-0. Here we have the approval of the overnight field trip to the state soil judging by the FAA members on October 19th through October 21st. So this, our FFA soil judging team has traditionally done very well, um, oftentimes making it to nationals, and this is just um, the culmination of all of the competitions. Justin Pearson does a really nice job with that. There's always um, supervision and the students do learn and benefit from this. I, I, as long as I've been in this seat, they have done this field trip without any concerns or problems. With a lot of benefits and sometimes trips out less for the kids. So. <coughs> any thoughts, questions, comments? From the public? No, I'll take a motion to approve the FAA field trip. So, the FFA. FFA, why is that? FAA. Well, I was thinking of flying somewhere, <laughs> you know, sorry, about national, a west, yeah. a west, it just got stuck. FFA. <clears throat> Steve moved. Second. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All in favor, raise your right hand. Mark? Sorry, I. <laughs> Mark. Motion passes 5 0. Okay, and then we have one more approval of an overnight field trip to the National FFA Convention by the FFA members November 1st through the 3rd. So, my understanding is. Um, with this, these are kids who qualify through various activities within the FFA. They have to earn points um, to be eligible to go. It is a culmination where they get to uh, listen to guest speakers, keynote speakers, do their own presentations, um, engage with other FFA members. 
make a lot of uh, connections and it's a, it's a great experience for them and it's a culmination event for those students. Any comments? Public? If not, I'll take a motion. Sure. Motion by Kyle. Second. Second by Stephen. All in favor, raise your right hand. Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Okay, donations to the Rochester Community Schools. For August 2023, we had $200 donated to Columbia Elementary by an anonymous donor for shoes for students. We had $300 <coughs> donated to Columbia <coughs> Elementary for outside play equipment for the daycare by an anonymous donor. Anonymous. <laughs> really having a hard time talking. <laughs> <laughs> we had an unknown amount donated to Columbia Elementary, a large donation of school supplies by the Burton Richland Center United Methodist Church. And we had $1,000 donated to the RHS FFA for miscellaneous needs by Doug and Gladys Blackburn. And once again, thank you very much for all of the donations by the community. It really is amazing to see that generosity. Anyone have any comments about the donations? If not, I'll take a motion to approve and accept the donations for August. So moved. Moved by Stephen. Second. Second by Ethan. All in favor? Aye. Motion. Aye. Donations approved. Five to zero. Now we have the personnel report. For August 21st, 2023, recommendations for Columbia Elementary. We have Patricia Camp, Instructional Assistant, Kindergarten, hourly rate $12. Hannah Smith, Instructional Assistant for Kindergarten, hourly rate $12. Riddle, Alexia Rude, Special Needs Instructional Assistant, hourly rate $12.59. Rochester Middle School, Alexis McSherry, Shared Position, RMS Student Council, Stipend $365. Corporation recommendations, Amanda Hazlitt, a case conference coordinator, special education, hourly rate $14.81. Bethany Shriver, role of mentor and liaison for students with Spanish and native language, two days per week, hourly rate $22. Bethany Shriver, continue working as an instructional assistant, three days per week, hourly rate $14.93. Jessica Sharinga, work as after school helper at Columbia, hourly rate $12. Food service recommendations, Madison Castro, transfer to Columbia Elementary Cafeteria, pay remains the same. Annalise DeVois, transfer to Riddle Elementary Cafeteria, pay remains the same. Catherine Lindsay, transfer to Riddle Elementary Cafeteria, pay remains the same. And Catherine Catherine Lindsay, after school program at Columbia Elementary. Pay remains the same. Athletic recommendations, Billy Medina, volunteer softball coach for 2023-24 school year, volunteer. Jason Coleman, volunteer softball coach for 2023-24 school year, volunteer. Bryce Abbott, RMS volunteer assistant football coach, volunteer. Bryce Abbott, RMS assistant football coach, Oh, under athletic res resignations, Bryce Abbott, RMS assistant football coach. So he I'm lost. So he, so he resigned from he resigned his paid position, but would like to remain as a volunteer. Gotcha. And then FMLA Alexis Mascheri, August twenty eighth, twenty three through October second, twenty twenty three. Any comments, questions, concerns? Public? If not, I'll take a motion to approve the personnel report. So moved. Moved by Ethan. Second. Second by Kyle. All in favor? Raise your right hand. Aye. Aye. Personnel report approved 5 0. Okay, Mrs. Vance. 
Mr. Snyder, do you mind beginning by sharing successes and things you're working on and things we might need Absolutely. to Absolutely. Well, um, at the, with it being the beginning of the year, we don't have a lot of the events scheduled other than open houses and, and things like that. So uh, we had a very successful open house. A lot of parents showed up, uh, really good uh, uh, turnout for that. The kids were absolutely ecstatic to get back into the building and it was a fantastic event. Uh, really this first month for us is um, kind of helping to uh, adapt and get the kids, I don't, I'll use the word trained um, in a lot of our safety procedures and things around the building so that uh, they can be safe. So we spend a lot of time doing things uh, that are safety focused. Uh, we did our um, fire drill, our first fire drill of the year. Uh, we were able to exit the building. We had everybody out of the building in uh, under two and a half minutes, which uh, for those kids, a lot of them being the first time, uh, that's a fantastic number. Um, sometimes we don't reach that till middle middle of the year. To do that at the beginning of the year is uh, is a real really uh, good accomplishment for our students. Uh, we also had CPR and AED training for all of our staff. Uh, that's a really big uh, big deal uh, for us, and uh, we continuously train our staff or refresh train them. Uh, this training was hands on, included getting the AED out, actually getting it up and running, um, so that they can hear it and and walk through all of that. Uh, we also had uh, bus safety. This in involves uh, actually getting the kids on the bus, every kid in our building, except for our daycare kids uh, and our pre-K kids. Pre-K kids have a uh, adult on the bus with them um, at all times, so they, they help them get in their seat belts and all that kind of stuff. But um, for our first grade in kindergarten, we went through and walked through bus safety, bus expectations. Uh, a lot of times uh, these kids have never ridden a bus before. Um, so it's a nice opportunity to get them on the bus, um, let them ask questions, um, show them all the safety features of the bus, and uh, make sure they understand why the rules that we have on the bus are uh, there for safety. Uh, we also spend a lot of time on playground safety. Um, our teachers take the kids out, walk through every piece of equipment, talk about safety, proper use of that, and our PE teacher also does the same in her class, takes the kids out and uh, reiterates that so the kids kind of get a double uh, dose of uh, playground safety. Uh, we completed dyslexia training, uh, or I'm sorry, dyslexia screenings for all of our first and second grade students, which kind of goes into Riddle's area, but um, all of that has been completed. We will do the uh, dyslexia uh, d screeners for uh, our, kind our kindergarten kids in September, towards the end of September, coming in and given those kids the dyslexia screener at the very beginning of the year um, doesn't uh, give us the data, an accurate uh, picture of what we're trying to get with that dyslexia screening. Um, we've also completed um, hearing screenings for all of our students. Uh, we've got that uh, finished up last, last week and um, the ladies did a great job of that. Uh, and I just wanna say for the start of school with the first month, um, our building was in fantastic shape. Transportation has been amazing. Uh, they are, are doing a fantastic job, probably the smoothest uh, since I've been at Columbia in terms of transportation. Um, and there's a lot of people involved in that, the bus drivers, the teachers, uh, the front office, the parents, um, following the guidelines of transportation changes and things like that. Um, we've had uh, a very good start for that. Um, our cafeteria, I talked to uh, Dina the other day, and um, she feels that it's the smoothest um, in the cafeteria that it's ever been. Kids knowing how to get through the line, uh, doing a good job of eating, uh, and just in general, it's been very smooth. Um, not to get into the high school or middle or anybody else's, but I have three girls, one at all the other buildings, and they've already eaten more school lunches this year than they probably have in the last four or five. And I, all I do is hear about how good the food is um, at the other buildings. They're good at Columbia too, but the kids are eating, eating school lunches and enjoying it. In fact, my oldest daughter was talking about some kind of a bowl you guys had today that was yeah, like, it's uh, good. Com it was, <laughs> she, she, compared it, she compared it to, to one of these um, actual Chinese restaurants yeah. that we go to. I don't know what the Chinese restaurant's called, but it, she had a name Pan for Express. it. Pan Express, yeah. 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 She's like, it's better than Pan Express. So, uh, kudos to uh, the maintenance, transportation, and the cafeteria staff in all buildings. Um, I think that you guys have done a fantastic job. And just um, for the start of school, our staff 
uh, has worked really hard um, to, to get us a great start, and, uh, and I truly appreciate all that they've done. Um, upcoming things, we don't have a ton coming up. Uh, we have picture day this week on Thursday, and uh, we will be conducting our first Alice drill with our little kiddos in about two weeks. So that's kind of where we're at at Columbia right now. Questions? Um, things happening at Riddle. First, I want to give a shout out to Columbia and Riddle teachers. Um, some of the results from the I Read 3 are coming out. And uh, as a corporation or as our third graders, we're at 93.5%, which is uh, last year we were at 87. As a state this year, they were at 82%, so we're 10% uh, above the mark. And uh, I know as a state, they're shooting for 95%, I think by 2027. So I just think the realignment or Title I, the curriculum that's been adopted and implemented by all our kindergarten, first, second, third grade teachers, all those things coming together, we're seeing the, the results of all that. And so I know my teachers are really ecstatic about those results and I think everybody should be as well. So thank you to everybody, because that's a true team effort to, to get that going. So it's, it's very proud of that. Um, we've got our clubs going, running club, our Barkman Optimist Bunch and uh, Choir Club are all going. So thank you, Mrs. Walkman, for the running club, and Mrs. Weaver Choir, and Mrs. Coulter, and Mrs. Zion for our uh, Junior Optimist. We have picture day on Thursday. So that's coming up. And we, uh, as a corporation, we transitioned from NWEA. We're using iReady. And uh, Megan McLaughlin's done a nice job of setting up some training for us. So we've got all the results, and now we're going to learn how to use those and make the proper adjustments. So looking forward to that. Any questions? All right. It's long. Um, riddle to middle. We had 95% attendance for Riddle to middle. It went very well. Um, we appreciate parents. Um, you know, send their kiddos to do that. They get to figure out how to do a lock, what their classroom schedule looks like. So um, that was a, a huge um, success. First day of school, we had PBIS, of course, the middle school, we'd love to have fun. Kona Ice, Dodgeball Park. Um, huge, huge thank you to the Parks Department of the City for going to the park and spraying for bees and stuff like that for Fulton County Sheriff's Department and sending SROs over there to make sure that um, you know safety in the park is there and that there was a watchful eye there. So we appreciate that partnership um, with all that. 100% of our medical, emergency medical forms have been handed in. Um, fire drill we did on the first Friday back to school went very well. Um, nice orderly fashion that the kids have um, been able to, to get into the, the way things go. School pictures were the first full week, and those are already done. Um, we successfully gave our first iReady assessments and are working through getting that data. Uh, we use that homeroom to build on what students know using that individualized pathway that they have in iReady. That, placed, uh, that replaced NWA for us, and um, it is a lot more centered on the iLearn test because the people from iReady have something to do with the iLearn test, so it just made sense to, you know, switch over to that, and I think it will give us much more accurate um, feedback on the kiddos and expectations on what to see whenever the spring comes for that test. Um, back to school dance, uh, last Friday was a hit, it was uh, heavily attended. Uh, kids had karaoke, pizza, line dancing, um, tons of fun. Open house was last Wednesday, it was a huge success. Over 100 families came, uh, many stayed the entire time, which was an hour and a half. Uh, we had a taco bar, cookie, punch, um, most of the food was almost gone. I know whenever eighth graders come through there, whether they're volleyball kiddos or football kiddos, um, we feed them. Uh, yes, they're not technically in our building, but they're a part of our building. We had kiddos come that the parents didn't come because they're working, we fed them. So that was uh, nice to see. Fort County, they had a table set up there, um, helping make connections as well as another partner for the district. Uh, between fifth grade orientation, riddle to middle, parent meetings and open house, um, RMS has seen over 90% of our parents and family in person. 
Um, Fast Friday started last Friday. That's always fun. Um, <laughs> parents got that caller on Thursday um, evening after school, and we fielded those phone calls on why they received it. So that'll, you know, it's a great thing to help keep kids accountable and just, you know, make sure their grades are up and it works. Uh, we introdu introduced our new NJHS members for seventh grade, um, and this week is Penny Wars. Dress up days go along with the high school, um, Columbia, and I think Riddle are also doing them. And on Friday, the dump tank. More to come, because it's Valley <laughs> Week and it's Bell Week and we need it back. Is there, any, is there anybody in this room that's at jeopardy of being in the duct tape? No, I am. <laughs> I'm very busy. Is there, is there anybody else in this room? I don't know. know. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to add pennies to a, to a bucket uh, tomorrow morning. <laughs> so anybody who does, can't make it in the morning, feel free to drop your pennies off to me. Quarters are great. Any coin. I, bills because that's negative. I may have a bucket out at the drop-off line. <laughs> at the middle school. Let's rip on through. We're going to pass the boot. <laughs> <laughs> um, things coming up. Data training for iReady for our teachers and admin. Um, Football is in full swing starting tomorrow. Volleyball is in full swing starting tonight. Uh, cross country, they all begin their seasons and you know we're off to the races with that. Um, September, we will be all about continuing to build on those relationships with the kiddos, learning how to utilize iReady to its fullest capabilities, learning and having fun while doing it. Um, I can't say enough great things about the staff that are in the middle school and how appreciative I, I am of them that they come every day and they love on those kiddos. So, thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to echo what they've said. I feel like we've had probably the smoothest start to school that I can remember in a very long time. Um, it's just been a really good start to the year. So. We have had our student class elections already, so it was just announced to class presidents, vice presidents, so on. Um, that's all done through our student council, and we just had that this week. Our boys' tennis team won the John Glenn invite on Saturday, and our girls' golf team set a new school record, and they just didn't set it. They smashed it. It was like 160 before, and they finished at 153, so that was very exciting for them um, and for the coaches as well. Um, big news at the high school, Mrs. Masterson has the snack cart rolling on Fridays. That's a big deal. I don't remember if it was Jana or Oscar who said it, but if you have not had a snack prepared by our culinary class, delivered by the life skills class on a Friday at 1.30, you have not lived yet because it is the best way to get through that last hour and a half on a Friday. It is wonderful. So we're thankful for Mrs. Masterson for doing that with our kids and then that we get to see those life skills kids hanging them out with Mrs. Heishman. We have dress up days this week. I hear there's a big football game on Friday. Um, we have a lot going on to get prepared for that. We had um, all of our students that are doing dual credit get signed up today. We had an Ivy Tech res um, representative at school today. So all those doing dual credit through Ivy Tech were signed up today um, in those classes. Uh, what we have coming up, the auditions for the fall play are this week. It's called Murder Mystery at the Murder Mystery. I believe that it's one of those like interactive plays that if the audience chooses something, then it changes how things happen on the stage. So um, that's kind of what the kids were saying in the hallway. So I um, believe that it's going to be pretty fun. The jazz band and a few other band kids are going to be performing Saturday at the Arts Festival on the Courthouse Lawn. They've been working hard at that. I'm excited to see them. Our Jostens rep will be here Wednesday, so the seniors are going to start picking out their senior stuff and their senior year is underway. We have the FCA tailgate this Friday um, along with that football game. And then in the next couple of weeks, we'll be planning for homecoming and the FFA pork chop dinner and everything that comes along with those. So again, very smooth start. We have an awesome staff, just like they all said. Um, it's been a great start to the year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you guys do. Yeah. Uh, directors here as well, if you want to hear from them. Yeah, definitely. Kevin, you want to share out transportation, please? Uh, echo off the building. Buildings are excellent on getting the kids out. 
It was a little rocky the first start, but we're getting it down to the science. Kudos to my drivers, they adapt to everything, changes every day. Without them, uh, <laughs> I'll be lost. Uh, I got a new driver in training right now. I'll be down at safety at Rucheville. Hopefully get him licensed, uh, lighten up some of the loads on the buses because they are full capacity as of right now. Needing at least three more drivers to make the routes shorter. The kids will be on the bus for an hour and 20 minutes. Roughly that's what they are right now. But the uh, uh, riddle, it started out rough, rocky, but we got down to the science now on dismissal. It's, they're in and out, gone. We, that's a little rocky road, but we got it figured out. Luke and I did. <laughs> but the other than that is, is you know anybody who wants to come and drive or anything, we pay for training and I train them. So the more drivers, the merrier. So <laughs> that'd be, that's all I've got. But yeah, it's been a very, very smooth start. First day of school, the radio chatter silent. For the first day of school, very unheard of. <laughs> but but that is a very, very smooth start. Thank you. Uh, uh, <clears throat> well, first off, I want to thank all of the schools, principals, vice principals, everybody, for being patient. Right now, we're a little bit understaffed. My building only has Don and I. Chris has been at the middle school for about a close to a month now. Um, he's helping bridge a gap there and keeping them above water. Um, and I would like to thank all my staff, you know, because they do an excellent job for me, for the corporation for the principals and everybody in the school. Um, we, this week, we're gearing up for the Valley game on Friday. So we've got a lot of things that we're trying to get the campus ready for. And then we're trying to finish cleanup of all the storm damage. And I would also like to thank Steve for coming, helping with the middle school tree but we do have a couple more trees to cut up and get rid of. So we're still. I got a chainsaw if you need somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to get approval from Mrs. Vance because she won't let me bring my chainsaw out of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate everybody and all the help that you guys have given, given me, myself, and my staff. So I want to thank you. Within our food service department, we hosted the NISIC annual training event, which had um, some of our vendors, whether it be food or equipment or technology, come in. And I'm being told by Lisa Abel, who is the assistant director, that this was the biggest turnout from what they had in previous years. Um, she was really um, very forward with saying she would like to have us host it again because it was such a great turnout. And there's such support with the food service staff um, helping as far as getting ready. Uh, I'm continually working on right now direct certifications, free and reduced forms, and the annual financial report is coming up due. And our staff has done really well this year with integrating new items into their menus and getting them implemented so we could get some more kids in eating. So we've had a really, really good turnout. But thank you all for the support and the continued support because I'd like to host more events and get some more stuff into our corporation. Yeah, it was nice for everybody to get to Bingle and some of them that couldn't come before and some of them that were closer to our location because we've traveled sometimes up to two and a half hours to get to this in the past. So, but thank you all. Thank you all. I know it's a smooth start for the year. It's nice hearing no reports, if that makes sense. You know, when it's, it's like the bus chatter, you know, when it's, when it's all quiet, you're you're either a little nervous or you're ecstatic. <laughs> so, but it's obvious that everybody, um, you know, 
your leadership with your buildings, with the students. You know, I hear it from my own son, I hear it from his friends, you know, how excited he is when he comes home, all the different activities and the different teachers and the new things. So thank you all for a wonderful start to the year. We'll hopefully carry it through. Did you have anything? I don't, I, I just want to thank everybody. We've heard a lot about smooth starts, but leadership starts here in this room with the board members, but also the amount of work that goes on in the summer to launch that first day, that first week, that first month is tremendous. And I don't want that to go unnoted here as well, that it doesn't just happen. It's a lot of work and a lot of working together. So I want to thank the team. That's all I have. Very good. Yeah, thanks. For, well, um, the first thing that came to mind um, during Luke's, convert, or Luke's update was, um, Janet and Luke, what, have you guys done some reevaluating on your uh, commuter, the, the car pickup? Um, so adjustments we've made to the transportation since the beginning of the year. Um, we open up our car gate now in the afternoon at 2.55, and that allows the cars to get through, and we get the numbers in, and we still release the students at 3 o'clock. Um, we've made adjustments to where we put our uh, bus students, so they're in different rooms according to their bus and things like that. So we've made those adjustments, and, and we've in the car line, I think we bought ourselves another five minutes or so, and as working with Kevin, I think we've, the bus is, we're able to get our bus kids out smoother as well. So, yep. I, th I think it's important to put a little bit of data to this as well. Um, there was data shared earlier and people were amazed by it. But when you, and Kevin, I'm going to lean on you a little bit. When you talk about the high school and the middle school, we're talking about a little over 680, almost 700 kids that are either walkers, uh, parents pick them up, or they're bus riders. And we clear that bus lot in about 13 minutes. And everybody's on their way to where they need to be. At each of the elementaries, we're talking about 320 some kids. Um, and we're able to clear those lots, uh, car walker, or car riders, walkers, after school, bus riders, everybody there in about 14 minutes. So when you think about the magnitude of the data going through there, it, it's, it's that's incredible. It, it, it's a lot of organization. We appreciate the parents' um, support at the beginning. It is, it is overwhelming. We want to work on building relationships. We want safe routes to school, safe routes back home. And, and that happens with patience and making sure that we're doing the right things and listening to feedback and making those adjustments. That's what I was wondering. Okay. Yeah. So. Any other thoughts, questions, comments? Concerns? Mark, did you have anything for us? No, thank you for asking. <laughs> okay, well, I'll take a motion to adjourn if there's no, did the public, I'm sorry, anyone in the public have anything else they needed to talk about? Okay, motion to adjourn, I will take. So moved. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. Ethan, second. <laughs> that works. Motion by Stephen, second by Ethan. All in favor, raise your right hand. Any on the table, feel free to stay. All right. Thank you all. Thanks, Mark. So, do you mind opening up the room across the room?